Hi everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie. It's the Ustawi segment where we discuss all things leadership, justice, government, governance, and purpose. Mm. It's got everything to do. I mean, so so power packed, and I really mm. love it. Um, so you're here. Esther has been here before. It's been a while though. It has. Um, so several Esther Karibusana, it's been several yeah, years. Yeah, thank Please you. Please look into that camera, introduce yourself to our guests, and then we can have a conversation. Hi, everybody. My mm. name is Esther Mwaniki. Mm. Esther Wairimo Mwaniki. I am a born again Christian who likes Jesus very much. Um, and thank you so much for having me here yeah. and for the work that you do for the country. Wow. Yes. Thank, thank you. you for the work that you're doing in governance space. It doesn't even feel like it's work in governance, you know? I was yeah. actually reflecting on that and thinking, you know, people say, oh, Pastor, you do so many things. I'm like, oh, but it doesn't feel like I do many things. Like, like I've not done enough, but I think it's, it's, it is a lot. Yeah. And it's, um, it's good to recognize yeah. um, that what we've done, what we're able to do. And I always think about these videos. Sometimes it's very frustrating. But let's say like the viewership, the take up, yeah. but I always think they'll be here forever. Yeah, they are. So I know that they'll be here and these are relevant conversations and that will be had forever. And is not for everybody. Yeah. It's for the 12 disciples. Wow. And so as long as you yes, have 12 so people, profound. you're fine. We're fine. So yes. 12 is the number. Is the number. <laughs> and I'm sure you have more than 12. So, more than 12. More than good. so 12 is good. Yes. I really like that. It's not for it's everyone. Governance. Yeah, governance is not for everybody. Because even when Jesus, now you see now, when Jesus Christ came, he was speaking to the 12. Yeah. And that's who he left the vision in to go yeah. and do the vision. You've yeah. just made that so much yeah. easier for me. Yeah. <gasps> Absolutely amazing. Okay, okay. So I had you here because you have so many firsts. <laughs> you know, we've been doing a series on the on the Voices of Ecclesia on Women Rising. Then we had Dr. Tekla Muhoro here. Yeah. She had a first uh, a, a, a doctorate, the first female wow. uh, do person we who led a doctorate in architecture, building construction from a certain institution. Uh, but you know, you now, your first are like on steroids. Like I need a trumpet. I, I need something. Yeah. Because God. Esther, by the grace of God. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's one. Okay, so you've done two fellowships. Yeah, That's what we're here to discuss. Yes. One was the Obama Fellowship. Yes. And the other one, I keep calling it the NYU Oprah, I know. Oprah Fellowship, but I know that's not the right she name. She funds it. She funds it. Yes. So that's what I keep calling it, but you correct me. Yes. You tell me what it's all about. Yeah. But the, the second one was Esther. Yeah. It was all You God. were chosen out of a, to represent a continent. Yeah. There were two years, because I think it must be the COVID thing, but you give yeah. us your story. So, you, you, do you know how big the African continent is, I Esther? Know. Because I know you like to downplay that. That's why you can say, it's God. We're, okay, we're, we're saying all glory to God. Yes, that but is But we are said. not downplaying <laughs> yeah. out of a continent. Yeah. You are one person. Yeah. One woman. Yeah. One Esther. Yeah. Chosen yeah. to represent a whole continent. Yeah. That thing, I cried. I laughed yeah. I, it was so divine it was like what is yeah. that and then you and then of course you want to just downplay it and say <laughs> it just happened no 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 Actually, out of a whole continent <laughs> you were chosen to represent a continent yeah. so maybe the whole idea of having you here was for you to take us through the journeys of the two fellows okay fellowships uh, what you've learned what you haven't learned what oh my what you need to share what you want to <gasps> say so i'm going to let you talk except yeah. i'm going to say like we had so much fun. I, I had so much fun with you in New I York. Know. It was a whole different perspective of <laughs> it was you. Nice. It was good to see you in that context. Yeah. But you are, and I wanted to say another thing is that you really are a leader of leaders. So oh, thank you. let me hear this story. Oh my, I'm wondering even where to start because it's, the last few years have been a lot. They've been intense. They have. Because it started in 20, it started in 2018, which is actually the last time I was here. Really? Yeah. In, we were in the filming in the Joseph's house. Yes. At that time. So it was that time I was tired mm -hmm. and then took a break and joined PLF actually. Mm -hmm. And I always start there because I feel like it was very divine that I joined the cohort I did, even if I was fighting it. I still remember our theme was kingdom expansion. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, God, I'm not here to hear about kingdom expansion. I really don't. <laughs> I just want to rest. <laughs> yes. Eh? I actually really struggled with the theme. And then I sat next to a young girl who is actually a sister of somebody who was here. And I would yeah. think, Father, I have walked away from this journey, me, I want just to be looked Of up. mentoring yes. others, because that's what Lapid Leaders yes, does. We even forgot to say that you are the absolutely CEO, visionary founder yes. of Lapid Leaders. So, Which follows me. 
Yeah, which which now because you're sitting next to this girl, yes, you, you need to impact her. And that's to your be honest, default setting. Yeah, but actually, her sister just did lap it. I don't know even how she will do lap it mm. somewhere along the way. Mm. Uh, the thought go mm. though. So it was just I kept thinking I'm taking a step. I really needed to look after me, and it was important. Yeah, um, and so I, it was a season where God fed me. And then as I stepped away from that, God started to release now these fellowships. Mm. I still remember. So I got a job in 2018, September 2018. I reported one day. I was there the whole day. And then end of the day, I told the person, I'm not going to take this job. But I needed to do that. (laughs) Because it's something you were fighting with God. I remember you were wrestling. Yes. You were wrestling with this is the direction God is calling me to do. But me, I need to get a job. Yes. Which is good. You know, there are people here who are struggling with such things. Me, I need to get a job. So me, I'm going to get a job. I am going to I do. do this And then also thing. I needed that sense of I'm not here because I have been locked. I made the choice to be here. And so you can also make the choice to leave. Yes. But that must be a record. We need to check one day. Yeah. And you quit. They must I have did looked one at day. you like... But the good thing... And then it was I was so set up because the organization had... The things that I am passionate about are African. Mm. And the injustice in this continent is the thing that will... There are many things I can take, but if I hear injustice, no. And and so I was in an organization where that day we were talking about businesses and funding and how African businesses don't get funding. And and I remember just thinking, no, I'm not done. <laughs> I am going to raise the businesses that are going to get that funding. Wow. Yeah. So I, I knew I was set up, but I now made the choice. Mm-hmm. And went through, went on with the uh, with the um, KBS PLF, um, which was it was very divine to be very honest. Mm-hmm. And I remember hearing a lot of prophetic words, but thinking, please stop telling me those things because I don't have the space for them. I you just don't have didn't. the capacity right yeah. now for greatness. I didn't. But I love that God keeps speaking. He, he says, does. Okay, just don't mind them. <laughs> just keep prophesying. Keep speaking. Yes. And keep talking wrote. because you have. I remember somebody. The, my partner is the one who ke- <laughs> took the notebook. Me. Book and wrote, wrote and wrote, wrote and wrote and I still read them. Now they are very relevant, yes. but because I remember the two one thing, fellowships. I hmm? know because the word I was given was the nations, and I believe it. I know that I'm called to the nations. So mm. anyway, in 2019, came back to Lapid, very shaky. But I'm just thinking I'm here. Um, in April, got the Obama fellowship. And it was, it's just the way God works. If I wasn't tired, I would never have applied for these things. Mm, for the Obama fellowship. Yeah. Um, and they pick one, one, like it was, and then our cohort actually was the last one that they did. So they had this thing they call a global Obama fellowship. They had just two cohorts. We were the second cohort and then wow. they were done with that process. Okay. And in our cohort, we had 20 civic innovators. So they went across the world and picked in what they call civic innovators. And in Africa, they had three people, and wow. I was the only African woman. You're the only African am, woman. Congratulations. Yeah, so we had one in Malawi, mm-hmm. a guy in Malawi, and a guy in Egypt, and then me, mm-hmm. and the cohort of the 20 of us. And it was such a blessing, to be very honest. I still, <sighs> I still remember going for the fellowship, getting it, first of all. And the journey of even getting my passport was so divine and dramatic. Like to get the visa for going because it came so fast and a lot of things just were moved around for purposes of me moving and going at that time. But I still remember I was so tired. So the first gathering we did was in Washington, D.C. And I don't remember what we did, to be very honest, because mm-hmm. I was tired. I just slept a lot. That's, that was the reason for it. I mean, we did important things, but for me, it was a sleep. It was rest. It was just rest. But I also remember at the end of that season, there's a friend of mine who was in New York and God asked me to just go to New York, visit them. And I did. I went, I visited them. It was the first time I was going to New York. I just saw a lot because I'm also a seer, so I could just see a lot of things. Then I came back home. Uh, the second gathering, I was now ready to engage. And the thing I say the fellowship did for me was one rest. And then the second thing was to dream again. The community has people who believe in the capacity of God to change the world. And if there are systems that are not working, God uses human beings to change change. those systems. And it is hopeful. They believe it. And then the kind of budgets they had, the kind of dreams they had. (laughs) 
I looked at myself <laughs> and I thought, here, yeah, what I will catch is to dream. I need a bigger dream, yes. a bigger vision, a yes. bigger budget. Yes. And they helped me with that, actually. Even today, that's what they helped me with. It's, I think the thing America has is the land of milk and mm. honey. And big and things. Big, big. Yeah. big. You, you can't do this in a small way. Yes. No. Huge. Yes. Out of this world. Yes. Maybe that's why they've been such amazing innovators. Because nothing yeah. stops them. Nothing phases them. Like, Their yeah, mind let's is do an abundance mind. Yeah. So they see from a lot. Mm. Sometimes being here, we are in robbed Africa, from that. We are. We mm. see a little. Mm. Or we and we see, survive. Yeah. And yeah. so, and that's a spirit in itself. God has to release people from survival because yeah. we are not in a season for survival. We have to enter the promised land mm. and just sort of see the way God sees. And for me, that was what that fellowship did. It did many other things. The other thing it did, so it helped me to dream and it helped me to rest. The last one, maybe there are many more, but the other big thing it did was very divine. In 2018, so I'm from Thika. And in between the whole rest thing, one of the first things God asked me to do was to go to MKU in a very divine way. My dad called me one day and told me, I think you cannot quit on Lapid. Uh, we need to go and find a way of you entering Mount Kenya University. Mm -hmm. I can't argue with my dad, even in my rest. I will wake up and I will go. Mm -hmm. And I went. And that day, we didn't connect with anything. I just thought, but I did what you told me to do. And then he called me a second time. He told me I have met somebody else in church. Come back. I went. And we had a meeting with... Actually, he didn't show up. This is the second visit. He didn't show up. And then on my way back, he called me, this person that I was going to meet. And he told me, Esther, you've come here twice. We've not met. What do you want? Anything you want, I will give you. And I have just been made the acting vice chancellor of MK. Wow. Yeah. And that's started a journey of us now having a dream towards MKU. My mom serves in Thika. Around then she invited me to preach to the youth in Thika. And it was again very divine. And the word God gave me was I'm raising Joshua's from Thika. Wow. But all these things were not making sense. They were just you're doing because you're doing. When the Obama Fellowship came through and they released the announcement of the fellows, there's an organization in Spain that reached out and told me, Esther, what do you want to do? We want to work with underserved communities. What? And that's how we worked with MKU. Wow. So it what? was almost like God in 2018 oh. was, mm. and even just the guy becoming the VC, it was so easy. Mm. And then March, 20, March 13, I still remember, March 13, 2020, uh, we went now into MKU, did the interviews, got our first cohort. That same of day. working in the underserved communities. Yes. The beauty of MKU, the difference between MKU and other universities is they serve that side. Like they serve they are, the undeserved, yes. un underserved yes. communities. They do. Okay. I remember we had, there's a time we had a student. Their, their experience of that university is very different from universities in Nairobi. Mm. And they're not very, they don't have programs, they don't have access but they are very hungry. I remember there's a, when we did the, during the pandemic, there's a student who used to climb a tree to have access to internet because he's from like Western interior, wow. Wow. but he's a very driven child, but they wouldn't have had access to things. Cause I think my perception is Nairobi is overserved and we need to start to ask how do you follow the devolution and go outside Nairobi mm. so that's what this gave us an opportunity to do wow. to now serve students I like to think of a Mount Kenya University as our central center and that God will give us other centers within and the country as well. through. and what you did is you took them through Lapid leaders. we did and the Spanish people facilitated yes. that. That's amazing. So that's the Obama Fellow. Yes. And that same day now, mm. 13th March, we started Mount Kenya University. Mm. And I got the letter from Oprah Winfrey that they were they selected me for the African Women in Public Service Fellowship. African Women in Public Service. Yes. So that's what it's about. Yes. And so you were, they selected one person yes. from the African continent? Yes. And so they normally eight. select one woman every year. I don't know where my couple really is, but... <laughs> 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 
Yeah. They select one woman per, per year, but yes. this was because of two years. Yes. Had so they missed I, out on the COVID year? Yeah, because of, so I was selected for 2020, Amazing. but now because of the COVID, I didn't go in 2020. So it was 2020, 2021. Yes. You were the one person. Yes. That it was so, all you were. You know, now is when I see it. Uh -huh. I saw the person who came in for the following, this year, 2022. Mm -hmm. She believes that we are doing different fellowships. <laughs> really? Because Why? of the two years, I was... I was given such access, honestly. Really, favor. Yeah. You're God's divine child. I know. It's true. Really? Like She's already so seen something different. different. Now me, I see it. I couldn't have seen it then. But now I can see, I can see how God just, my story was just, Jesus just setting me apart for it. And yes, so did the one year of the New York, um, which was beautiful. It was, I may think I've been in arrests for the last three years. <laughs> I think you're the perfect example of rest. All these things are happening, but you keep referring to this rest, which is amazing. Yeah. So that you are in a season of rest. I am. So it's possible to have a season of rest and have many activities yeah. which are taking place in the rest, but you yourself are in rest. Yes. And it was so divine. So what New York did, you know, I was still running rapid. And so when I tell people I was resting, they don't understand that. Mm. But there's a timing difference of seven hours yes, yes yes and then my program wasn't very intense and so it had intense days honestly i just had a lot of time to rest to reflect think. go to the parks especially in summer towards the end mm. and also do conferences so i did and they were funded i visited harvard twice i went to stanford i spent a week in las vegas i was just on Jesus' budget of seeing... But you were being equipped. <laughs> I was. Like I remember Las Vegas, there's a lot of equipping that was, was taking place. A lot. And because you're a leader, you also equipped me. Because I think one of the things that you... You bought me a book. Yeah. And I thought, Esther, what is this book about? <laughs> Conscious Capitalism. Capitalism. Oh. And I looked at it and I said, okay, Esther. Can I talk about that one? Yes, because <laughs> I'm telling you that book. I read it, I put it down. And that's how you know a book has had an impact on me. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's too much now. First, let it rest there. <laughs> Let me first process, let me think. But it's such a relevant book because it also brought, I think to, for me, the, the, it brought to, to light kingdom. Things that we want to do that are the kingdom of God yeah. that we really don't understand how to put it in words, but yeah. it's actually conscious yeah. capitalism. Yeah. It's building businesses that have a conscious. Absolutely. Uh, but as, because as well, how can you put conscious and capitalism in the same sentence? Yeah. But you know, that's a good book as well for anyone who wants to read it out there. Uh -huh. Look jump, for it, now you're please. jumping into conscious capitalism. <laughs> I jump into conscious oh, capitalism. That is a subject I'm very passionate about. That's yes. why I am jumping into mm. it. Mm. I believe we are in a shift. We are. And the way... So if you think about it from a corporate perspective, the way the world we live in was built is during the industrial age. Yes. And all the systems we live by today were built in the industrial age. And we moved to a digital age. Yes. And part of the characteristics of the digital age is one, it's a knowledge era. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have access to a lot of information. Mm -hmm. But also we are quickly moving towards what's called the post-knowledge era. Mm -hmm. Because the knowledge is useful, but the knowledge is also harmful. Yes. If people don't know how to mm -hmm. manage mm -hmm. the emotions behind knowledge, because knowledge needs a container. It does. And part of a lot of the issues we have today is we have a lot of knowledge, but we've not built the containers to, or the capacity. For that. Is it the capacity yes, to hold it? Exactly. So you have young people, old people who have a lot of knowledge, mm -hmm. but we don't know what to do with it. And that overwhelms our brains, our minds. And that becomes a lot of the issues that you're facing today. And what that means is we need to build afresh. Okay. To ask in this era, what are the things that we want to, we need? What didn't work, what worked in the industrial age? Mm. Part of that is what capitalism is. Some people would argue capitalism actually has done one of the biggest harms in today's world. Mm. Because the spirit behind capitalism is profit above everything else. Above everything else. Nothing else yeah. matters. It's just profit, profit, yes. profit, profit. Don't care about people. Don't yes. care about the, just what's the bottom line and are we making it? And it doesn't work. It At, doesn't. If you think about the pandemic, it's the planet saying you can't keep extracting from us. Mm -hmm. The world was mm -hmm. built in a cyclical way. Mm -hmm. You give, you take, you give, you take, you give, you so take. So we're just taking. You can't keep taking. 
it will not work. It is not a question of if, it can't work. And so when you think about climate change issues, mm. it's that planet is saying this system is not, not working. working. Build a system that looks after planet, yeah. that looks after people, mm. that looks after profit. Beautiful. And that's what conscious capitalism attempts mm. to do. Mm. Mm. I think one day actually we will have new economic systems. I think we will. I think it's just right now because we know capitalism, it's easier to say let's build conscious capitalism. Mm. And it's part of Because now, we still want to put capitalism yes. in there. Mm. But in truth, capitalism hasn't served us. It mm. served us at the industrial age. Mm. And it was created by people. And people can ask, can we create new economic systems? Yeah. And those systems will also come from Africa. And amen. Because we amen. understand people in a way we they do. can't. We do. Yeah. Our culture is about people. Yes. The way that we are conscious about people, yes. the way that we treat people, more, the majority of us, yes. we really do think about people yeah. and we do want to be um, recognized. We want to recognize people. Yeah. There's a quote that, um, I've forgotten his name, he's one of those Pan Africanists from an, an earlier time. But he used to say the West gave us civilization mm. and it's. But the real people civilization will come from Africa. That's so true. And and so, but for us to do that, we have to allow God to heal us first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then also allow God to expand us in terms of capacity. There are one of the conversations I was having with somebody yesterday um, is around a verse that we have to spend a lot of time on. Mm -hmm. Where God says, I have put you as sheep among wolves. Those. Be as shrewd as serpents, yet as harmless as doves. doves. Though that's the world we live in today, and that's a hard thing for the church to actually make but peace it's with. But it's, it's truth. It's the truth. Yeah. It's something that we have to think about, because yeah. I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it. I've been questioning God. I've been like honest to God. What's going on here? Yeah. You know, why are the children of the world yeah. cleverer than we are? But he said, he actually told us they are, and they yeah. will be. So there are strategies that we need to get yeah. into so that we we become clever as well we must there's no we become as wise as serpents yes. as, as gentle as doves, as doves like both. he said both i think we do so i think the extreme and that's why conscious i think conscious capitalism builds, brings both mm. we have systems that socialist kind of systems mm. and africa tends towards those that are harmless mm. as doves the West tends towards the other side, which is shrewd or wise without the harmless. Mm. God says, let's marry both. Mm. And yes. that's yeah. what conscious capitalism allows us to yeah. do. Yeah. I was reflecting on how Moses was born mm -hmm. and how he was born at a time where they were finishing boys. And what the parents did is they put him in a, in basket. a basket. They have the sister observing kwa corner, mm. watching what's going on here. Mm. And then now the princess comes and saves Moses and then mm. she runs. And says, I'm going to look after this and child. And then she Can gets I her mom. To come and look after this yes. child. And the mom is paid mm. to breastfeed Moses. That is what wisdom looks like. Wow. It is not avoiding the fact Amazing. that boys are being killed. They are. That's the reality. It is the truth. How do I create a, 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 a something contrary to this to yes. save my child? Yes. Wow. And that's what we have to challenge ourselves to do. Mm. I personally believe we're in a global time. And the bigger thing is asking, what do these people know? Mm. That is in, based on Isaiah 60. You know, Isaiah mm. 60 talks about the wealth will come from the nations. Mm. And we think about the world in terms of just money. There is knowledge. There is knowledge. There is building that they know that there's we will take. There is tools. And that is what I was doing for those few years. I took, I took. You took very knowledge. Much. Which you're not going to be, yes. you're going to apply. Now that's and help the us job. Apply. To figure out how do we now apply yeah. the knowledge. You know, even encourage me, you know, I want to do TVETs, you know. Oh, yes. I've always told you that, yeah. And then, you know, but you always give me scary plans. You say, okay, so we have to get funding for the team. And I'm like, hey, wait. wait Actually, it's yeah, moving. But it's, yeah, that, that's what, because that's, that's part of it, yeah. isn't it? We want to equip people yeah. to be able to do what they do. I always feel like you change the, tra 
the, the is it like the the landscape of a certain society over yeah. people you can imagine just putting if you put up a proper TV at somewhere yeah. training and vocational or educational center i mean it would change people's it lives it would and if your they, gift is there mm, my gift you're very good at raising excellence mm. now imagine if you replicate that into imagine. the country because that you do that with such is and i want to thank you so much and i want to do that with the youth yeah. i have a passion all of a sudden for the youth <laughs> i'm just like this let's go what's happening what's going to do this so that's what i have i have a passion for the youth Aww. and i really want to equip them uh, hey, we've talked about that. many things here today okay, but no. i guess lapid <laughs> leaders is also it's about the youth so yeah. i really want to impact the youth yeah. i really do i just feel like i want to pour myself into them every time and we will come out of conversation i tell god i want to be young again take me back take me back take me back <laughs> to when i was 30 so i can do this all over again he says no i'm going to take you back you go pour out into yeah. into the next generation go teach them the things that you know i'm like okay yeah and you do it with such ease i'm so grateful yeah. Esther. yeah you do it with such ease you're a teacher but i also love the way you do your things you do them with an excellence that we need in the marketplace i remember i would come back <laughs> because i did quite a bit of trips and i remember being in the airport and thinking we have to think in systems yeah and ask you know if you're in several airports you see the system mm. and you see how mm. you have millions but there is order there is order and that's a, a um a way of thinking because it's i think kenyans especially mm. we are gifted with creativity okay and that's useful but we have to ask what it looks like to move from ideas to creating like strategically and structurally mm. <laughs> we have to move from ideation to creating with structure and strategy mm. and and fail and make peace with that because i think also the other thing i see heavily mm. is fear mm. that we spiritualize mm. and yeah. fear that we spiritualize yes <laughs> and you wow. know the way emotions are you either deal with them mm. or you create a system that just doesn't deal with them and I, i i don't know where it came from i don't know if it's a national thing but we actually have a lot of fear we do and what we've then done is we've created systems that feed that that feed the fear it does and part of that is we don't create because we will fail and we are fearful mm, of that failing of failure and even if you do what jesus's kingdom is built by st- i took a step <laughs> mm. and you trust god enough because op- it's the verse that um you speak about often of i'm not giving you a spirit of fear but of love of power, power and of a sound mind. mind and those counter fear a sound mind a power love, of the holy spirit power. and love And and that means we fail many times but, but we, we go still, back we still keep going yeah but we have and this is also common actually it's not just in it's in church and outside church so what people have done is looked for systems to feed our to protect ourselves from addressing our fears mm. to insulate us yeah. i think to insulate us and keep us in that cocoon and if it's working well you know let me just go until you later i don't need to try yeah. something else And and God's kingdom is by strength and courage that's why God tells Joshua enter be strong be strong and courageous be strong and courageous have i not said yes and so anything that God has called us to do has to have those two things at work strong and, and courageous. courageous and then we keep going because the power of the holy spirit is in us to build the things that he wants to build in this time Mm-hmm. but it has to be that we say and and it's not pretending you're not fearful it's naming it i'm afraid i'm afraid i feel like building just is the one of those things that just you have to name the fear every day and say but the power of the holy spirit inside of me let's go mm-hmm. Wow, Esther. What's next for you because I think we're out of time already yeah. but what's next now so you've done the obama fellow you've done the african African women in public service. Okay. So that's amazing. Yeah. Well, oh, so you're going to serve us now. African women <laughs> in public service. Although let me know say what's next so yeah, that you can make it as the conclusion. But thank you so much. Mm-hmm. I'm in a very creating season. So you want to create some creating and build creating and building. 
I, for me, I tend to think of them together. I'm not good with theory. Mm -hmm. I am a theory practical person. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are a lot of things around that. I'm writing. We had a conversation. I know. We had a conversation. Where a was I? I can't remember where I was. And then I said, Esther, why aren't you yeah. writing? And then you said, it's unlocking all this writing. Yeah. So I'm so excited. I, I can't wait to see the, the writing. writing. Yeah. So I'm writing and there are some programs that are also creating that yeah. are just going to be around. You know, writing is powerful because people can read. Like, I think, um, I don't know what I said. Like, you know, with the real new book. I yeah. mean, it's gotten to the most amazing places. It's yeah. gotten to different nations. It's a fantastic book. It's a con thank you. It's yeah. a conversation people are having. Yeah. They're telling me about life transformation. Yeah. I'm just like, wow. And the spaces that it has gotten into, yeah. even spaces that you wouldn't really normally think this book would get into. Yeah. But it's gotten there and it's changing lives. That's the power of writing. It is. And it will always be here. It yeah. will always be here. It will be changing lives. Yeah. It will be. So that's the power. That's why I was like, Esther, I think you should write. Because yeah. you've been afforded or accorded yeah. some amazing experiences yeah. which not everybody gets. Yeah. Now even you're seeing the Obama Fellowship is like the second court and that's that. Yeah. Now there's the African Fellowship here of um, of public service. Yeah. I think it's important to study how to how, to, how do people serve publicly and how do oh they do my. that well? Then in there, there's conscious capitalism, which has come in. Then there's you want to create and build <laughs> and execute with excellence. There's so much going on. Yeah. You have the opportunity, you do lapid leaders, yeah. which is equipping the youth yeah. and equipping another generation. Yeah. So I think there's a lot. And writing programs and training and yeah. pouring into them. I think there's a lot that's going on and I'm extremely, st extremely proud of you. Oh, thank well you. done and keep going. Thank you. Keep going, keep, don't stop. Thank keep you. going and take as many with you yes, as you I can. Have that I do. I go with them. Mm. <laughs> yeah. wow, that's Thank amazing. you too. Thank, Thank you. you for speaking into my life mm. uh, without even me knowing. You unlock a lot of the next mm. for me and I'm mm. grateful for that. I'm so I, I was remembering even that book for The Real You. We got quite a number of books and we've been giving our students. So you're mm. actually already speaking to the youth. Yeah, yeah. I really am. Mm. Thank you. And I want to speak to them more. I just feel like I, I have to, mm. I'm going to die empty. <laughs> I am taking everything that I've learned, all my lessons, everything. And I want to pour it into somebody who oh. is out there to listen yeah. to what it is that I have to say. So I'm also writing still more. So oh, I'm, I'm really good. grateful. Yeah, oh. but maybe we should do some more work together in I terms agree. of this youth. I can see I think it. it's time. Yeah, I can see it. You have a mm. lot of wisdom that is Beautiful. going to be very helpful for us. Mm. I think being a season where people will build, and so we need to learn under builders, people mm. who have been able to create, and you've created communities. Wow. So we want to learn from that. Because I, I, one of the things I always say, I don't want to make mistakes that people have already learned Made. from. Mm. I want to move fast, because that allows you to move faster. Because mm. if you don't do that, you go through cycles. Mm. 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 So that, I'll figure out. I'm sure something God will open it up I'm sure for us to will. do it. But yeah. thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done for representing the continent. Thank extremely you. Extremely well as an Obama fellow. Yes. And in this other, I keep struggling with African. Women in public service. That is so powerful. Even I just, I'm feeling <laughs> African women in public service. I just love it. So thank you so much. Yeah. And I'm, I think also it helps me think like for Oprah, because she funded this yeah, other one, the Obamas did. funded yeah. the other one. You know, just giving up, giving opportunities yeah. for us to learn and to imbibe, you know, from from that culture. But I think what you need to do is bring in the kingdom of God culture. Yes. So you can't just be the Western culture. Yeah. It's learning from them because they have built yeah. and they've done it in a huge way. But bringing the kingdom of God yeah. into it, because that's now my passion. Yeah. Changing the culture of leaders and organizations and individuals into the culture of the kingdom of yeah. God. And whether we are overt about it yeah. or not. Yeah. Because I could call it ethics and governance. Yeah. And the principles just which to live life. We don't even have to bring Jesus into That's it. That's so true. Go. So let's do this in whichever yeah. way and format that we can. Yeah. So thank you and well done. Thank well you done. Thank so you. Much. Welcome I back. I appreciate it. And thank you. Yeah. And I always you. believe there's a lot more. So there's even more. No. There's no, many <laughs> nexts which are coming. So let's look forward yeah. to them. We give God yeah. all the glory. Amen. Mm. And thank you. Thank you too. Well done. Mm. God bless you guys. Bye.